Last week on the Sarah Show. And that's really an act of self-love. In in the being willing for others to be upset. It's an act of self-love. Yeah, being willing to put boundaries on what I'm able to do and not able to do. Mm-hmm. It's an act of self-love towards myself. Yeah. You know, talking about boundaries, uh, boundaries are not fun to a lot of people. Um, uh, you know, a lot of my clients struggle with uh-huh. boundaries. We talk about boundaries and they say it's so hard for me to say that. Yeah. Or to express that, yeah. or what is your way to deal with boundaries? Well, gosh, what a question! Um, boundaries is something I really only started to see the value in them over the last two years. So I used to be someone that would say would proudly say that, oh, I, I don't need to put boundaries on anyone because I'm above all of that. In a way, there was like an arrogance I had around boundaries that, that almost I was proud to say, oh, I've never had to set boundaries. And, and it almost felt like a personal failure if I had to put boundaries on someone because it meant I'm not able, I'm, I, I'm not able to, to deal with this. Mm, don't you love that ego when it shows up like that? Yeah, <laughs> so I had a lot of ego around boundaries and, and it was really toxic to um, recently I've had to had some really uh, powerful lessons around um, just again boundaries is a way to actually live an authentic life in alignment with your truth Mm. and it requires I haven't I, like I'm still I'm still working this whole boundaries thing out but I I feel like with certainly with certain family members I have had to put down boundaries for the first time in my life and it was very uncomfortable for me to do that mm. but it it felt right it was very uncomfortable but it felt in alignment it was very um, upsetting, yet deeply liberating. Boundaries have a, a, an interesting way of triggering abandonment or rejection. Yeah, in others. Yeah. In you. Or in, and in yourself. In yeah. yourself, yeah. yeah. I can't say no or I can't yeah. say this because they're going to abandon me or they're going to reject me. At least yeah. that's what it was for me. You yeah. Know? If I say that, they're going to abandon me. And then it was... Um, um, I learned this from my sister-in-law, Sonia, who taught me that boundaries are for you, not against them. And that made a huge difference for me. You know, um, when you're setting a yeah. boundary, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it against them. Uh, and that, like, something clicked for me once I once I saw I love that. that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, it made a huge difference. Yeah. So, so tell me, tell me about. Um, I don't need to set boundaries. Like, is that um, is that because it's a hard thing? Then I think no. The reason I was living that is because I, I was under some skewed idea that I was able to be with anyone and anything, and nothing was gonna. I wasn't allow. I'm, I'm not gonna allow anyone or anything to take me down, and um, that was hard work. That's spiritual ego. It was spiritual bypassing, yeah. Mm. So so I had a lot of um, skewed ideas of boundaries. And now, um, yeah, a lot thanks to my wife, who's really clear on her boundaries. She has, she's just allowed me to, yeah, discover the joy of saying no to all things that are not in alignment with my authenticity. 
So this has been really encapsulates my year and 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 also the, a lot of the work I've been doing with clients has been really like even I'm running a program right now about alignment and authenticity and just what we're doing is looking at those two things and there's a lot of conversation around taking action the importance of being in action the, the importance of yeah always taking action and i and i feel like what's important is to really get in alignment first and that requires you to say no to many things mm -hmm. and that's not easy it hasn't been for me and for me a, a, my boundary has been i'm no longer saying yes to projects collaborations friends people in my life that i'm no longer in alignment with and i don't feel is supporting my highest good mm. you know when you're talking about that that idea of um i should be able to be with anybody yeah right and nothing should be able to uh -huh. affect me yeah thanks for uh picking me up for <laughs> <laughs> calling me out on that yeah no, but that's true because I I I went through that as well. Oh, know? did you? You were one of those as well. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, you you know, in the world of um, psychology or coaching and landmark and all of that, you yeah. know, um, it, it's whatever is happening outside of you shouldn't shouldn't affect you. Yeah. Um, and I, I get the concept, right? Yeah. And I I also get that I'm human. Yeah, and um, I I I don't think maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, because it's not that it doesn't affect you; it does affect you, right? Because if you affect if if it's affecting you and you you're acting like it's not because you think you shouldn't. Yeah, well, that's just another way of being in inauthentic. Yeah, right. Yeah, and losing your alignment. Yeah, um, but if it affects you and you're just free to speak about it, if you're fully self-expressed and you say that yeah, th this is affecting me and you can have the conversation with that person, then you are free to be with anyone. I think it, like prerequisite is to feel free and be free to speak about anything. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that you can be free just to be yourself, to be authentic with whatever comes up in the discomfort of it. Yeah, and say, hey, that's bugging me. Yeah. Instead of like that shouldn't bug me, or or instead of oh that's fine, when really it's not. Yeah, oh you do that, did that. Oh, I was very good at that. Yeah. 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 We had a we were in, at the Dolphin Mall today, and we went past a shop that has cinnamon rolls, and Christina is she's like a health freak. Okay, so. She just was like a kid in a candy store, like jumping up and down, like, oh, my God, I got to eat one of these. And uh, I was like, whoa, those things look like crazy calorie bombs. Never, like not the kind of thing she would go for. And so she ordered four of them. Like they came in a, in a, in a bar and she just, she just ate them. And um, she just let go of all the rules ideas you know like constructs about things she's not supposed to eat you know like one of the things she freaks out about is margarine now these things are made out of margarine okay and she just indulged mm. and she had so much it was delightful for her to just do that and i got to see how easy it is for us to then you know like oh we need i need to oh, I can't eat this or I can't do that and just create all these restrictions and it was so freeing and beautiful to see her in this just complete indulgence and it's such a small example but in a way it was it was like for her, she broke a boundary. She broke a self-punishing thing. She broke some something that she had limited herself and the joy that just came from that was so, was just beautiful. Mm. How do you, um, what is that line between discipline yeah. 
right? And commitment and integrity and uh, letting loose. What is, what is that line there? I don't think it's a line, really. The, the way I see it is it's any line is going to create some sort of rigidity. I, I just think what's really useful is just looking at where am I coming from. If I'm eating a donut and I'm feeling sorry for myself, I'm trying to cheer myself up by giving, <laughs> by eating this donut. And then I'm feeling bad because I shouldn't really be eating a donut. That's where I see isn't helpful. Like, it's it's basically, if I'm going to eat a donut, and I'm eating a donut because I choose to eat a donut, and I just have no thinking about what is this going to do to me. And it, there's, there's, I actually think what's more harmful than the donut is all the toxic thoughts I have that I'm digesting at the same time as I'm eating the donut. Mm. I mean, I have, I, 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 I don't know about you, but I've, I've met, actually, I think it was, yes, I met my wife. Until she was 18, she didn't eat fruit and veg. Until she was 18. She lived off junk food. She was perfectly healthy. And I just think that's, and today she's very, very health conscious. But I just think what's interesting is she, it wasn't a problem for her. She was eating what she was eating, and that was it. She had no thinking about it. Mm. And I just think what's, what's, what's more important is what are we digesting mentally? Mm. And if we can, you know, if we're eating a salad and feeling sorry for ourselves and having a sad, boring salad. Party of one, poor me. But thinking that we're doing good to ourselves because we're being disciplined and sticking... I don't think that's very healthy. I agree. And so I think rather than, 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 than drawing the line, is looking at where is, where is my decision coming from? Mm. Is it coming from a poor me party or is it coming from a, just a place of fun and freedom? You, whatever you choose, look at where you're coming from. Yeah. Is it a choice or is it, you know, or is there an in order to? You know, is it like a a, a a decision in order to, or is it? Yeah, I think that that, that may sound a little confusing, but just at, at the, the the most simple form is like, can I be both? Can I, you know, can I honor my value for health and honor my value for fun? Mm. and be both I have a question around um, becoming super self aware you know where oh, that's cool yeah <laughs> where we're constantly engaged uh -huh. with where we're coming from mm. or with the chatter or you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it doesn't become a place of where we're flowing, but it, like, you almost feel like someone is always watching over you. Where are you coming from? Where are you doing this? Why are you doing this? And it, for me, it becomes unhealthy. You know? Again, it just, you know, maybe that comes from that place of trauma for me. Like, it becomes that teacher who's just like watching over me to tell me is this good or bad or you're coming from a good place or you're coming from a bad place or you're doing the right thing, you're not doing the wrong thing. Yeah, that actually sounds more like self-judgment than self-awareness. Okay, tell me more. Well, I think if I'm asking myself, am I doing the right thing? And there's, there's a lot of evaluating going on. And I actually find self-awareness, there's... there's no evaluating happening. There's just awareness. And there's just in in yeah, there's like I'm not entertaining that mental chatter. 
And I actually think if I am asking myself, oh, where am I coming from? That's just another layer of chatter that I've now packaged as self-awareness mm-hmm. to make it more honorable. So how, how does self-awareness feel to you? Still. It feels still. It feels clear. I immediately know because there's an absence of tension in my body and there's an awareness of the tension in my body. So I'm there's it's like I become aware of what I'm feeling, I'm not not feeling. It's like I'm aware of that I'm feeling frustration. I am not frustration. I am aware that I'm feeling frustration. Oh, I can relax. And now I can I can it gives me a whole world to step out of all of the emotions and not and not even step out to be with it not be in it it allows me to be with it and for me self awareness is when i can wow just just be with it all tell me more about being with it versus being in it so if i'm in it i i'm not even aware that i'm in it if i'm frustrated about something and there's no self-awareness then the only thing that can liberate my frustration is that things go as I want getting things my way um, if I'm aware that I'm like I had to, I had to drop off a luggage um, and I was running late and I said I'll be there at 6.30 and I wasn't sure if I was going to make it on time and so there was a sense of panic, or not like like a sense of discomfort I was feeling in my body. Just a feeling of like, oh gosh, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not. Like. And the, with awareness, it shifted from, okay, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. If I, it's, it's not going to, it's not going to be easier for me to drive for the next 30 minutes feeling tense and worried and stressed and, and was just, or so turned up the music a little I kicked back and I said I'm just going to enjoy this ride if it works out it works out if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out and it was just a a um, a release and this is such a simple um reply but it's it's um to me that was profound because mm. actually I'm now able to just enjoy getting from A to B and I'm okay like I'm I'm not just saying I'm okay I'm okay I, yeah I'd be disappointed if 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 it didn't work out but I'm okay with being disappointed and um and it did work out and I was able to I I, I was five minutes late but that was okay mm. and um and the awareness was just, I am not the guy that's freaking out that I'm going to be late. And I don't have to entertain all the thoughts of the guy that's freaking out that I'm going to be late. Mm-hmm. The meaning I'm giving, the poor me party. The awareness just means, well, I don't even have to deal with all of that. I can just enjoy the ride. Turn up the music and just cruise. Mm-hmm. It's almost as if you're saying when you're not taking it that seriously. Yeah, we take things. I see. I would take things seriously when there's a lot of reason for it to be serious. Oh, because there are consequences if things don't go as planned. And in my life, I felt like. Every single plan, really, like almost every single plan didn't go as planned. True. My life has been a collection of p- 
plans that failed. And I'm just so okay with that. So do you not plan anymore? I need to because, you know, we live, in, we live in, in a world of planning, but I'm, I'm more... I'm more interested in in letting things unfold than trying to control. Like planning for me was really a way of controlling things. And there's certain there, there's certain things, you know, obviously if you're going to throw an event, there's a lot of planning you need to do and things you need to take care of. But I've worked in events. No matter how much planning, there's going to be things that you don't plan for you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. And so it helps to have a plan. It, yeah. It makes sense to have a plan. And not be attached to the plan. Yeah, it's that's it. Yeah. That's it. You nailed it with that. Yeah. Having a plan. But it's actually being attached to the plan that messes with us. Yeah, definitely. But having a plan is a great foundation. It's an idea, it's a direction. Yeah. Gosh, how it unfolds? The more I can be free with that. Um, the less resistance I'm going to bring when things don't go as I wanted to. And resistance is, gonna, is what's going to rob you from fun and joy. Right. Talking about fun and joy, tell me about it, you know, one of, you know, call it trauma if you yeah. want. That now you look back at and you laugh about it. I'm seeing what is it that's in the past that I can't laugh about. That's actually what I'm thinking. <laughs> what is it that I'm like, huh? Isn't that interesting how, and you and I spoke about this a couple of days ago, how our mind goes directly to what's missing. Yeah, or what's missing. What's missing, yeah. That's, well, a, that, that, that's a big one for me. That happened to me this morning, Sarah. I was on a, um, I was on a call and it went really well. Like there was great connection. This is um, for... Um, for a, a potential new client I'm working with um, um, for a whole t an, an organization with their team. And it just went, the call was great. And I, I like, there was connection. There was, like, fun. I mean, it was just a great, it was a short 20-minute call. It was great. I hung up the phone. I was like, oh, that was great. You know, I was, like, feeling like, yeah, that was great. And uh, feeling really optimistic. Five minutes later, boom. Five and minutes. Five minutes later, I get a thought that says, Oh, you could have slowed down the conversation here and asked him that. And I was like, yeah, that would have been great. <laughs> and I went from that was an awesome call to, oh, shit, I screwed it up. And now I'm like, cool, I screwed up. Cool, that's okay. I learned. Cool. And I can recover. So I'm not really like I... I I was beating myself up, but for like a minute. And then I just was like, no, actually, that's cool. I got to see that. Mm. I'm, I'm learning. I'm growing. Um, wow, that's, that's, that's great. Is it that, you know, it's very interesting what you're talking about here. Is it, do we do that because we have that addiction to punishing ourselves? However that you know, it looks like. Yeah, it's like, okay, I, I can I, I can be all happy with myself and like until that thought comes, oh, hang on a sec, you maybe, don't be so proud of yourself. That's, you didn't do that well. Right? <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Isn't yeah, it? it's, so, it's so interesting. We can have, um, you know, 10 people give us positive feedback. That one person that hit, get, gives us a negative feedback and somehow we forget about the nine other people that said something positive. This would happen when I had a restaurant. I would get some raving reviews. One person would make a complaint and it was almost like it didn't matter how many good reviews I had that night. It didn't matter how much great feedback I had. What I would go to bed remembering would be that one negative comment or feedback. Mm. And then I would work on improving. And, you know, I'm... I had a conversation with the hotel manager last night about this. And she said, how do you motivate people? I thought, well, what a great question. And, uh, and I said, well, it starts in, in communication. Because 
are you talking about what's wrong, what's not working, or what are you talking about what's possible? And when we shift co the conversation from what's wrong and what's not working to, hey, what's actually possible, damn, that's motivating. It's empowering. It's creative. It becomes a conversation that is generative rather than being stuck in the past, descriptions of things that aren't working, blaming poor me parties. What's missing? Yeah. And it occurred to me in, in the, you know, I, I, I was like, huh, that's an interesting question. But it occurred to me to answer that by saying, hey, shifting from what's wrong to what's possible. That's hugely motivating. Coming to work, looking at what's possible instead of what's wrong and what's not working. Mm -hmm. Yeah, looking at what's right with me versus what's wrong with me. Yeah, looking at, well, what's going well? What strengths can I build on? This is right, that's really interesting. Like, what if, what if there really wasn't anything that's missing? Yeah. Like, what if there really wasn't anything that's missing outside of the question, what's missing? There's beauty in that from a, you know, from a spiritual perspective. Um, what is, is. Yeah. Right? Life just is, and what's happening is just happening. What's missing, not as in like, what, what do we need to fix it? But what's missing to make this thing come alive? But then, what if it's already alive as is? Gosh, there's one word that comes to me, and that's acceptance. Mm. What's missing is we may not be accepting things as they are. Mm. And what's missing is just, can I accept it, love it, appreciate it as it is? Not because it's a strategy, not because it's a good thing to do, just because if there's acceptance, there cannot be a resistance. And we can build something from acceptance. But resisting, we're just really falling back into a constant, perpetual searching for what's missing. Nonstop. Yeah, nonstop. That question can be like a broken record on repeat. It can also re-traumatize people. Well, it, the places, it, it, yeah, it, it, it always, you know, it never really feels empowering and encouraging. It's like you're never done. You're always looking for what's <laughs> missing. It's exhausting. Yeah, and you'll always find something that's missing. Yeah, I was addicted to that, you know. You were addicted to what's missing. Definitely. Yeah. You know. So what's missing, Sarah? Not, nothing, no more. <laughs> <laughs> right. I decided nothing's missing. Yeah. Um, acceptance. Yeah. And you know who thought me that really uh, was my dog, Leo, who passed. Mm. Yeah. Um, I really struggled with that death. I didn't accept it. Yeah. Um, talking about acceptance, it, it took a while for me to finally accept. And it was stages, right? Um, that resistance, that fight, that uh, why did it happen, you know, or, you know, the self-pity party. <laughs> why me? Mm. Not cool. Um, you know, it's, like, it's almost like a fight with God. Um, and I, I, I was at Burning Man this year. And during one of the last nights, I was um, sitting in the outside looking at the stars. And I just had this moment of like, I was really sad about Leo. And I asked God, like, I'm, I'm really sad. It's not cool. And it was 
so interesting what I felt that moment. It's almost like God was next to me. Mm. And I was looking for an answer as to why. And I said, I'm so sad about this. What I heard God say was, yes, I know. Mm. Yeah. And that moment, I fully made peace with the fact that Leo was gone. The simple fact that it's almost like the acknowledgement or yeah. the validation of like, yeah, this, this yeah. sucks and I know you're sad. Yeah. You know, not as in like, well, this is how life works, <laughs> you know, or just accept it or just be with it or just, uh, it's life, it's the circle of life and you're never going to understand or why not you or, you know, any of those, what I used to probably hear inside of me and from people yeah. as to um, the, the common answers. Oh, you know? yeah. It's, and, and when you say that to people, oh, I lost my dog, it's, um, a lot of people aren't really prepared to answer that question in a way that brings you closer to you being okay. So it, it's a lot of good intentions, but I know that know when I when I lost my dog I mean I had people say things like oh well you'll see that's one day you'll get another one and you'll forget about Rocky and it'll be about the new one it's like well intended things to say but um, really not helpful and I think what you heard from God is what no one heard is, is the thing that maybe no one had said to you but really it's just an acknowledgement I hear you I see you yeah and that's okay and that created acceptance yeah that's so simple profound and just deeply um, yeah I deeply appreciate that share someone asked me you know uh, not too long ago like if you could teach one thing, what would it be? And I said, surrender. Surrender meaning that experience, mm. because you can't really explain it. It's that experience when the chatter slows down or when it's surrendered and you're in the body, like fully listening and actually following yeah. that nudge, um, no matter how loud the chatter gets. Yeah. You know how loud the chatter was for me today? What are you doing? Why are you doing this show? This is stupid. You don't even have time for this. It's not going to work out. What a crazy idea. What a stupid idea. You know, everything that my brain could come up with as an excuse mm -hmm. to cancel this, it did. And it was really loud, you know, to the point where it gave me anxiety. And I'm not someone who gets anxiety. Yeah. And I got really anxious. And I thought about like not doing it. It was there in the back of my head the whole time. I was gonna do it regardless. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's I, a, there's I, a yeah, there's a power there. You you weren't committed, but there's something else, right? It's not just I'm gonna do it because I'm committed. It was like there's you were being guided by something. Yeah. And it's uncomfortable and and yeah, that the louder that chatter gets, really, the the, the more you're stepping into surrender. It's more than uncomfortable. <laughs> you know, it's anxiety. It's like it's oh, no, what you, the hell are you doing? You have like that puking sensation. You yeah, know, like when yeah. it gets. Also, I know when I have that sensation is I'm doing something right, yeah. or I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm doing what I'm guided to be doing. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm like, God, do does, does you have, have to make to? it so uncomfortable? Yeah. You know, like, come on, give so me a I break. So I want to acknowledge you for being here today, for putting aside the puking, oh, my God, so many reasons you could have canceled. And you stuck with it, and you're here, and it's been a delight. And uh, we've had this uh, this conversation, which in itself has been a surrender. We've just come together. There's been no script, and there's just been an exploration and um, what a beautiful container that you've created. And I want to acknowledge you for for what you've had to what you had to put aside 
to be here today. Thank you. Thank you for saying it's that. It's been a delight. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. I am so happy that you are the first guest for this show. <laughs> I mean, it just worked out, right? We didn't plan it. Yeah, it was very spontaneous. I tried to cancel and that didn't work. And uh, I myself also had, um, so I was also, also want to acknowledge myself because I also had to put aside a lot of things for me to be here today. And I think that that's, um, yeah, that, that's just so cool. We we both got to have that experience, and yet we're both here. Yeah, yeah. This this is amazing. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for the invitation. I'm excited to see how the show develops and whatever gets created from it. And uh, I'm honored to be your first guest. Thank you for the invitation. You're welcome, Philip. I have no plans for the show. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That the, the no the no no plan show heading nowhere. No plan. Nothing We're to just, fix. <laughs> nothing to fix. Nothing's missing here. <laughs> nothing to improve. We are just gonna have fun here. I you know there's something about I want to do this live with people. You know I think it makes a difference being in the presence of someone like in person. I am so sick of Zoom. Yeah. Uh, I mean I'm I'm grateful for Zoom and yeah. everything is brought to me, my family and my business. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm missing that personal interaction where we can be here and like can look you in the eyes and feel your presence. That's right. And have this conversation yeah. the way we've we've yeah. had it today. I think it's. I feel it, deep. I feel deeply nourished by our time together. Yeah, me too. Me too. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Sarah. for being here.